AP, Las Vegas, are we closer to the metaverse than we realize? It depends on who you ask at CES, where businesses are showcasing inventions that can further submerge us in virtual reality, or VR. One of the main themes of the four-day tech conference in Las Vegas that closes on Sunday was the metaverse, a jargon for three-dimensional virtual communities where people may interact, socialize, and engage in recreation. A number of other businesses and startups promoted augmented reality glasses and sensory technologies that can help users feel and even smell in a virtual environment. Taiwanese tech giant HTC revealed a high-end VR headset that intends to compete with industry leader Meta. Users of an earlier, more commercially-oriented version of the technology can smell anything from a romantic bed of roses to a marshmallow cooking over a fire at a campground using VR goggles. This version was primarily intended to promote scents and beauty items. The company markets the device, which includes an app, as a hybrid of an Instagram-style digital spa in an effort to aid clients in unwinding. The company's CEO and co-founder, Aaron Wisniewski, said in a statement, We are entering an era in which extended reality will drive commerce, entertainment, education, social interaction, and well-being. The degree to which these encounters are emotionally compelling and absorbing will serve as a gauge of their quality. They possess an unequaled power because to scent. The statistics indicate a decline in interest. Sales of VR headsets, which were widely used in gaming, reportedly fell by 2% last year which is bad news for businesses who are counting heavily on further usage. Nevertheless, major corporations like Microsoft and Meta are spending billions of dollars. And many others are vying for market share in complementary technologies, such as wearables that simulate touch. However, customers aren't always wowed by what they discover. Tech consultant Ozan Ozaskinli, who traveled more than 29 hours from Istanbul to attend CES, put on a set of yellow gloves and a black vest to test out a gadget known as a haptics, which stimulates our sense of touch by buzzing and vibrating while transmitting sensations. Oza Skinley remarked, I think that's distant from reality right now. However, why not if I were considering using it to replace Zoom meetings? You can feel something, at least. Virtual reality advocates claim that by effectively enabling the capacity to be with anybody, anywhere, at any time, widespread acceptance of the technology will ultimately be advantageous to various sectors of society. Although it's too soon to tell what these technologies can do once they've completely developed, businesses hoping to provide users with the most immersive experiences are eager to embrace them. When haptic technology is fully integrated into VR, Townsend predicted that small ways we engage others would shift, such as feeling the ground when walking with your spouse or gripping their hands while you're doing so. However, according to Matthew Ball, a metaverse expert, it seems unlikely that many of these items will be used frequently in the upcoming years, even in gaming. He asserted that industries with larger resources and more specific requirements will likely be the ones to lead the adoption of new technologies, such as the medical industry and bomb squads that use haptics and virtual reality to aid in their work. Additionally, according to David Goldman, vice president of marketing for Loomis, an Israeli company that produces AR glasses, optical technology is already being used by fighter pilots, surgeons, and underwater welders who want to keep an eye on a patient's vital signs or MRI scans without having to look up at multiple screens. Other large corporations, including Walmart and Nike, have started a variety of virtual reality-related projects. However, it's uncertain how much they will gain from the technology in its infancy. According to McKinsey, by 2030, the metaverse might produce $5 trillion. But aside of gaming, Michael Kleeman, a digital strategist and visiting scholar at the University of California San Diego, noted that much of today's VR use remains a bit of a fringe pastime. Where is the value in this? People who are advocating it must respond when questioned. Where is the revenue? Not what's fun, what's cute and what's interesting.